Hi, hello and welcome. My name is Meg. I am a costume designer and maker and I specialise in creating fantasy fashion and historical inspired costumes all from secondhand and repurposed materials. I like to find the magic in the mundane and the purpose of this channel is to hopefully inspire you to do the same thing. I've got a really exciting project to share with you all in today's video. My friend Florian Hencher, some of you might recognise him from social media, he is attending a beautiful big event in Versailles, the Palace of Versailles in France in a few weeks and he has commissioned me to make him a special custom suit to wear for the event. Now this is going to be inspired on a couple of other creations I've done in the past. So one of these suits was very much an 18th century Marie Antoinette kind of inspired piece but with like a modern twist on it and I created this for a customer of mine a while back now and then inspired by that I then made another suit for my Arcadia collection which was shown at York Fashion Week last year and that is all made out of secondhand velvet curtains and where it had all faded on the velvet I then used those areas to create like a ombre effect and I also created like a ruffled shirt and everything to go with it very similar kind of vibe and Florian has worn this suit so many times I just keep lending it to him to wear to different events and we kind of both decided like okay you need your own version of this so that is what we're going to be creating today now we've decided to go for something a little bit extravagant for this costume and we are kind of going a little bit inspired by Louis XIV who was one of Versailles' most infamous kings he named himself the Sun King and so because of that reason Reason, we are going entirely gold for this costume. I have the most amazing fabrics here so inspired by the pink suit which was all velvet we have got this amazing gold velvet here it's gold crushed velvet this is a remnant actually that a friend of mine gave me so this is actually upholstery fabric but of course there isn't enough of this for the whole suit so I'm thinking I'm going to use this for accent areas like the collar maybe the peplum and then I have ordered a pair of the most amazing curtains. These curtains, I believe, are from the 1960s. I'll have to double check. But how amazing is this gold? And it's got these like roses all the way down and this is just gonna look epic. So I think the main suit is gonna be in this. I'm gonna do a pair of breeches as well to match. So the majority of it's gonna be out of this. So I've got my fabric, I've got my coffee. Let's get into it. Okay, so I've found my pattern pieces, so now I just need to sort these into piles of what I'm going to cut out of which fabric. Those pieces I think are going to be in the velvet, and then I think these pieces are going to be with the roses. Once I've kind of organised that, I need to figure out how much fabric it's going to take, and then I'm actually going to back my fabric with something a little bit stronger. Okay, so you can see here I've just kind of very roughly laid out my pattern pieces on the double layer of fabric just to see how much I'm going to need for the jacket. So I think I'm just going to back this whole curtain basically because I've also got the breeches to make and I can use this extra section up here for maybe cutting out the waistband and things like that. A little top tip for you especially if you are working with secondhand curtains a lot of the time they have repeat patterns which go down the length of the curtain so when you're cutting out your pattern pieces on a folded layer of fabric make sure to fold it this way rather than this way because if you fold it this way and you cut a piece out one piece will have it the pattern working up and one piece will have the pattern working down and that's the same for things like velvet as well so for this I want everything going all the same way because I want the roses growing up the whole thing which is why I've had to fold it this way okay so I've got my curtain fabric I'm going to reinforce the back of this because this is kind of prone to fraying which I learned with a recent project so I'm going to back this now you could always do this with interfacing or fusible I'm just going to use whatever I have and that is is this stuff so this is actually called Bemis I believe basically you can like bond two fabrics together so it's really good if you want to kind of layer up like a lightweight fabric onto something stiffer what I'm gonna do is basically bond it to this 
and then on the other side maybe use like a lightweight cotton or something and it should sandwich this should sandwich in between the two and kind of hold them together and so it'll reinforce this fabric and it won't fray as much when I cut it. Okay so you can see here I've got a layer of cotton underneath this is just from a pair of old curtains it's a little bit discoloured and stained but it is washed and clean and this isn't going to be seen because it'll be on the inside and I'm actually going to cut a lining layer and put that over the top so yes none of this will be seen so I'm going to bond this cotton with the Bemis layer and then I'm going to put my gold gold layer over the top and that should hopefully glue the whole thing together. Okay so you can see here how this is now bonded as one layer to the cotton. My ironing board could only take so much so I'm going to do this in sections about this size, start cutting out pattern pieces. Once I've kind of run out of space then I'm going to do another batch of this on the ironing board and cut out the rest. So I now have my pile of pattern pieces, we've got the velvet bits, I cut those out as well. I've got the peplums there and the collar, I've tried to do it so that they are symmetrical. This is the back piece here which I cut on the fold, I've managed to get a nice clean line of roses down the back so I think that's going to look amazing. The next thing to do is to cut out my lining pieces probably. Yeah, <laughs> So I'm just cutting out my lining now and what I am using here is actually a secondhand duvet cover. So I found this in a charity shop. It's really lovely, lightweight cotton material and it's just got a bit of a subtle pattern on it in this kind of nice peachy colour. So I thought that would complement this quite nicely, keeping in with those warm tones but also it'll be on the inside so you won't really see it but I do like a patterned lining, I just think it really adds to it. I've just got to cut out the lining for the peplums, the sleeves and then we can actually start sewing. <laughs> The other thing I wanted to mention is that you might see me cutting out pieces and this is where they all go, so they go into a scrap basket, so even like threads, loose threads that I trim off things all go in here and then this all gets repurposed, so I'll use these for other projects, turn it into like stuffing for something or sometimes local schools or nurseries like to pick them up um, to use them for collages and craft materials and things like that. Nothing gets thrown away, everything, 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 everything gets saved and reused. Okay so I've started sewing up the jacket, just pinned the side seams and I'm going to pin the shoulder seams as well and then I'm just going to try this on. Our measurements are kind of similar and the suit that he has been borrowing was actually made to fit me and it fits him really well so I'm just going to make sure that this kind of fits me and then I'm also going to double check it with a, a tape measure and check the measurements as well. Don't want to pin myself. Oh my god, it's a light! It's gonna look amazing. Okay, so I've now sewn everything together and I've pressed all the seams flat on the inside. This is gonna look amazing! I'm obsessed with just this down the back. So the next thing to do I think is add the collar for the sleeves and then I can do the facings on the inside and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm having a little bit of a moment trying to figure this out. Obviously, ignore the sleeves, I've just pinned one on one side. The next stage really is to add the collar, but I feel like I need to know what I'm doing with the overall design before I decide on the collar. I quite like the velvet on the outside, but then the velvet peplum, it just feels too disjointed here. I'm just not sure if I've made a mistake and if the whole thing should kind of be in the rose print. Do I just do the peplum in the same and keep the velvet collar? Or, if I kind of sewed the collar this way, you've got a bit of a velvet pipe on the edge and velvet underneath. And I don't know if actually that's quite a nice little highlight and then keep all this the same. Oh, I just don't know. And then I'd have to, obviously, then this would look wrong. I'd have to recut the peplum, which is fine because I've got enough fabric. I think I best speak to Florian and see what he thinks. We have basically decided to keep the velvet on the collar, but we're going to have the rose fabric for the peplum part. So I'm going to go ahead and start sewing this. What I'm going to do now is 
add some trimming. So I got this secondhand off eBay, this whole roll of amazing gold braid with tassels on it. This is going to trim the whole of the outside of this collar. So I'm going to stitch that all on now and then I can actually attach this to the jacket. Okay, it's been a few days since you last saw me. I have been working on the suit alongside some other projects and kind of just got carried away and forgot to film some of the steps. So I've made some progress. The jacket is almost done. The next thing to do is the breeches and the shirt. So I'm going to show you the progress that I've made so far. So I kind of went ahead and did a bit more of this without filming it because I had some camera issues. But this is what it's now looking like with the jacket. So we're almost there. I've just got some hand sewing to do with the facings inside here. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. I think that it's going to look amazing when it's a full set. So the next thing to do is to cut out and sew a pair of breeches to go with it and then I'm also going to do a frilly shirt and a neck ruff. Hello, okay so it's been a few days since I was working on this outfit. I've had a couple of camera issues so I'm now on my phone. I've been in a bit of a rush this past week with some other deadlines as well as this so I've just kind of ended up missing some steps in terms of recording and just kind of sewing so this is where we're currently at with the suit so the breeches are kind of made up i just need to sort out the hem under the knee i need to stitch down the waistband and then the jacket is pretty much finished i just need to do some hand stitching on the inside and then i went ahead and made the lace cuffs that are going to come out under the sleeve here and then also <sighs> this neck ruff. Probably just like one of my favourite things that I've made and I'm going to show you it now. So these are the cuffs that are obviously going to be like this. Oh my god, I actually love it so much. This is the ruff slash cravat kind of thing. Obviously you're going to have the collar coming down over here and then we've got this vintage brooch that I found in the vintage shop and this is detachable so it's got ribbons on the back and this is just basically made from some leftovers of taffeta which is from an old bridal skirt and then all of this lace is secondhand. this was given to me by a friend so now I basically need to make up like a blouse or a shirt to attach the cuffs to and then also some other little bits of lace just to tie the whole thing together I'm going to use a secondhand blouse for that and repurpose it because there's no point in making a brand new shirt when I can just upcycle one. I'm just going to try and find one in the charity shop. Yeah, cool. Okay, so I found this kind of chiffon blouse in a charity shop that's got like the perfect shape for what I'm looking for. A lot of this you won't see. You'll pretty much only see the cuffs and then the neck ruff. But I do want to make this shirt really pretty underneath just so that it can be worn on its own as well. So this is pretty much all that is left of the lace now. And I'm just trying to figure out placement so that um, we can make the whole thing kind of tie together so that it can be worn on its own with other outfits. So I'm just kind of figuring out the placement then I'm going to stitch all that in place and then that will be finished.
So I really hope that you enjoyed this video just as much as I did. I'm really, really proud of this one. I think it's probably one of my favourite ever creations. It's certainly one of my favourite things I've made in a long time. And if you would like to see more of my work and the kind of things that I get up to on a day-to-day -day basis, then please feel free to follow me over on other social media platforms such as Instagram and TikTok. I'm quite active over there. And I've also got a Patreon if you are interested in having more exclusive access to behind the scenes stuff and voting rights on future videos and projects and things like that. A massive thank you to Florian for letting me include him in this video and a huge thank you to my sister as always for editing this for me. Of course if you want to see future videos then please feel free to subscribe, turn on notifications if you don't want to miss the next video and I hope to see you soon. Bye! Hi, hello and welcome in Venice. What am I saying? No, it's Versailles. Fe, fe galant, no, fete fet galant, galante for my friend, for my friend. <coughs> mm, this is all going so wrong. This was a very 18th century <sighs> videos slash pictures of those here. I'll see you in the next one hopefully. That's out of the door. Oh. And you get access to cars. Oh I'm hungry today. Bye.